This is China's first premium ultra-wide prime lens for Michael Four Thirds, the Meiki 8mm 2.8. And I'm a little confused. This is Jimmy Cheng from Red35. If you have been following this channel over the past couple of years, you may have seen me reviewing and testing a ton of Chinese lenses. And you would probably remember that almost all of them were within the budget category. There are of course premium options from China, and Lawa is a prime example. The latest products are no, nothing short of amazing. But here's my confusion. Meiki is a budget lens manufacturer that has grown on me over the past couple of years especially after the brilliant and fun full circular fish islands, the 3.5mm f2.8, which I also recommend over Lauer's 4mm 2.8. But this new 8mm 2.8, it is not a budget lens. Make his first cracked at the premium market by making a lens that looks and feels like it comes from a high-end manufacturer. The metal lens barrel looks and feels amazing. The gap between the aperture and focus rings to the barrel is thin and uniform and very modern and kind of like a German car, like Leica lenses. In fact, apart from its physical design, it feels, <laughs> it feels like a lens that's built by Leica. Both the clicker's aperture and focus rings are super smooth with a higher than usual resistance to avoid accidental turn, which is quite a nice touch. The design also confuses me though Instead of going small and compact, which is a typical signature of a maker budget Michael Forthard lens, they've decided to go big. To give you a non-scientific comparison, the new 8mm 2.8 looks more than twice the size of Lauer's 7.5mm f2, which is both wider and faster. However, and once again, the build quality is something that I haven't experienced with a Chinese lens manufacturer before. Going big is one thing, but making the lens heavy is another. But what do you expect? A high grade metal construction and lots of glass, especially the huge front element. So a 480 gram is an elephant in the Michael Forthers world. And this means the new 8mm 2.8 is more suited on a larger camera body with grip. If you use it on a smaller camera like the EM5 or pen, passer spine will certainly give you weird eyes, thinking that you strangely pointing the camera at the private part. Talking is probably a waste of time, but let me show you some photos so you can see for yourself before I make any in-depth analysis. As you can see, the image quality stacks up with the word premium. It delivers punchy contrast and vibrant colors. Central sharpness is also impressive, even at wide open 2.8. I would even say that it is as sharp as some more expensive lenses in this category. So stopping down doesn't really give you any real world advantage other than depth of field. But if you want pin sharp details, optimal is 5.6 before the fraction creeps in at f16. Corner sharpness is not as impressive as the center, however. Softness does exhibit from 2.8 all the way to f8. And f11 is your best friend if you want edge to edge sharpness. But mind you though, this lens does stop down to f22. Vignette is present between f2.8 and f4 and goes away completely at f5.6. Chromatic aberration is very well controlled as distortion. Even more so than my new love, Panasonic Leica 9mm f1.7 Summilux. And because this is a manual lens with no profile correction in digital, the lens is optically corrected for distortion. If you study closely, there is a tiny, tiny hint of barrel distortion in the central region, but there's nothing to raise alarm unless you're doing some critical straight line comparison. 
and this is certainly not a concern in the real world. Bokeh? Well, if you manage to get some, this is an ultra wide lens in the end. And yes, even if you manage to get some, it is okay, but I wouldn't call it creamy. It's a mixed bag of vintage and modern halfway breed kind of thing. So it's nothing to scream about. And flare on the other hand <laughs> is rather poor. The built-in lens hood does absolutely nothing to stop any light flare at any angle. So you need to be sure that flare is a thing for you, both for video and photos. One standard for Makey 8mm 2.8 is the Sun Star. Darn, it's good. In fact, brilliant. Much better than Panasonic Leica's 9mm f1.7. So, this is a great lens for night cityscape, general landscape that's involving the sun, or just anything that you want to see those lovely stars. On the outside, Mikey's new 8mm 2.8 is genuinely a presentable premium piece of kit. While its performance is more than decent and should satisfy most but the most demanding professionals, apart from the price. And this is my confusion that I mentioned earlier. Now we have the brilliant Panasonic Leica 9mm f1.7 Summilux, full autofocus support with lens profile correction and metadata support. Smaller, lighter, faster, and critically sharper. And all of that for just a tad more than Mikey's 8mm 2.8. I'm not so sure how the pricing stacks up. Okay, I know the lens will be cheaper over time, but so will the Panasonic. Given all things considered, should you avoid it, consider it, shortlist it, or just go ahead and buy it? Well, I think you should consider it. I personally think that you shouldn't avoid this lens because I know some photographers would prefer manual focus. And there's a lot to like about this lens too. The premium built certainly shines over the Panasonic Leica's plastic body. And the larger physique may also appeal to photographers with larger hands. So this is a very niche preference and only you would know which option is better for you. <laughs> so that's it folks. I hope you enjoyed this video and you find it useful. You know what to do now. Give me a thumb and sub if you want to stay in touch with anything photography, filmmaking, and of course, Michael Four Thirds. Peace. Just a little something that I didn't talk about in the review earlier is that uh, this lens can use filter, even though it's, uh, there is a built-in lens hood because there is thread in the filter, uh, the built-in hood, I mean. And, uh, so you can actually do use, use a screen filter or any other filters with the, uh, the diameter of the threads that you have uh, with, uh, that's compatible with the lens. So you can use it, but here's the trick. <laughs> because the hood is a pedal type hood and because of the flare issue that I mentioned in the review, it's just pointless because the light would basically hit on the side and ruin your picture. So in order to use filters, you will have to use some duct tape or something to cover the side of the, uh, the built-in lens hood to make sure that no lights will get inside the lens. Uh, so it's a bit fiddly if you really want to use filters, but it's not the end of the world like the 7-14 2.8 F Pro, uh, I mean like the Olympus Pro lens, uh, which you know you have to use a special uh, filter adapter to use that lens. Um, so it does allow you to do that, it's just a little bit fiddly. Uh, apart from that, I really genuinely think that this is an interesting lens, apart from the pricing like I mentioned, um, it's built really good and uh, really top-notch built. Um, you know, the only, only thing that you can tell that Makey hasn't really stepped up is the marking because it's still printed, not engraved. Uh, but other than that, the fit and finish, really, really good and uh, I genuinely love it. According to the specs, uh, there is brass elements inside. That's why it's so smooth in the uh, focus and aperture ring, uh, which is fantastic. And I love this. Um, yeah, you know, you just have to make up your mind whether this lens is for you. Although now we have quite a few ultra wide rectilinear 
uh, lenses on the market now, including really my love, the Panasonic Leica 9mm 1.7. And this is 1mm wider, which is not exactly that much wider. And the Panasonic is also a lot faster as well. And this is just 2.8 and the other is 1.7. So yeah, it's down to you. And uh, if you're a landscape guy, I think you may like this lens because the sun flare, I mean, not sun flare, I mean the sun star, <laughs> um, that really is something to scream about. Anyway, until next time, I have other lenses that'll be waiting for you. See you soon, bye.